Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. I want to ask the Lord to help me to say what I'm going to say. I want to be led of him. I went by Walmart this morning and um, I was going into, my glasses broke on me and I was going back in to trade them to get a new pair so I could see. And uh, as I went in, there was a girl sitting down, you know, at the door there. She didn't say anything. I went on in and um, as I come back out and I walked past her, she said, a um, couple of dollars for a broke traveler. So I stopped. A lot of times, you know, you think, well, they're just out bumming, you know. I stopped and I pulled a couple of dollars out of my pocket and I handed it to her. I didn't say anything. I went and got in my truck. And I thought to myself, we're all broke travelers traveling through this world. Without Jesus, you're a broke traveler. You have nothing. So uh, I drove around that parking lot. I said, I'm going to go tell that girl that. So I drove around once, I seen her. I drove on, I seen somebody else walk past her. She evidently said the same thing to them. And uh, I thought, well, she's just bumming. And I just started to drive out and I said, no. I thought about what would the Lord do? He would not just throw her two dollars and leave her and not say nothing. So I went back and I knelt down where she was sitting and I told her, I said, we're all broke travelers. I said, we all are broke travelers. I said, I'll be thinking about you. I didn't. And she said she was homeless and, and um, she was on her way back to Florida trying to get back to Florida. I don't know how true it was or not, but anyway, I thought about that. And also when Eddie got this morning and said what he said about spirits working on us. There are spirits that work on us that cause us to do things to, that we're not proud of, we're caught in. Think about what Brother Thomas used to tell us about uh, the monkey with his hand caught in the gore, holding something that he needs to let go of, but he won't. We are trapped. There are spirits that work on us, like Eddie said, that we need deliverance from. I guess what I'm saying is Watch out for the snares of the devil, the things that he will, things that we're holding to that we need deliverance from. Let them go. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm just so thankful to be here this morning. Uh, it's a wonderful worship service and, uh, and everything. I appreciate what's been said. Everything's been said so far. Uh, I keep, the thought keeps coming back to me. Uh, one of the songs that the choir sang, uh, let the worshipers arise. One of the verses says, I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to the king. And as we sang that, it, it just it just stood out to me. And, and I thought about it, and I thought, well, I've surrendered my all. Have I surrendered my all? And, and then I, as I thought about it, I, I realized it's an ongoing process. You know, as we've heard, uh, before, this is not a sprint, it's not a dash, this is a marathon that we're in. You know, some of us, you know, are cho chose to run this thing for 60, 70 years, you know. Some of us may not live that long, we only have to run it a few years. But it's still, it's an ongoing process. We have to surrender our all every day. And surrendering to the king, who greater to surrender to than the king of the universe that created us, that brought all this into existence. You know, and just like Danny was saying about, about the monkey with his hand in the gourd, he doesn't want to surrender that prize in there, whatever it is, you know, what's the prize that we're hanging on to? You know, and, and, and just like we've heard recently, you know, the way to win is to surrender. I mean, our nature, we want to fight. You know, when you when you're involved in a game or a sport or whatever, you don't, you don't just surrender and say, here, 
I surrender so I win. You don't. You fight with all you got to try to win that game or win that prize or whatever it is. But our example, Jesus, he surrendered. He surrendered his life on the cross. He surrendered his life to actually come here and become a human being like us. I mean, for 33-odd years, he surrendered. You know, he knew what he was getting into when he got here. We don't. You know, we, we got no clue what, what our life's about most of the time. I don't anyway. You know, but every day we have to surrender our will to try to serve him. And, you know, sometimes I don't do such a good job. I'll confess it. If y'all have been with me Friday, you, you'd have wondered how in the world my wife puts up with me for 40-something years now. You know, but it's like I say, it's, it's an ongoing process. And I'll, I'll say like Eddie said, you know, if you don't know the Lord, if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, why? I mean, we've had, you know, most people here, are, you know, have, have been here for years. There may be one or two that have just started coming, or, or maybe this is your first time here for one reason or another. You know, I'll just ask you again in, in, in the Lord's stead, if you don't know the Lord, reach out to him because he's there for you. I mean, that's what he's, he's here for, and he's here. You know, I, I believe it with all my heart that the Lord is here with us today just, just as much as if he were here in, in the flesh when he walked on the shores of Galilee. Praise the Lord. Uh, two, two scriptures come to me. Uh, first one's in Romans chapter 12. I have to agree, uh, we were, when we were singing that song this morning, we got that part, uh, let the worshipers arise, I surrender to him my all. You know, if you're, for one thing, the Lord, we're open and bare before him. You know, we, we all can uh, put a, a smile on our face and, and say, I'm doing good, but the Lord knows when there's something in our heart that's not surrendered. And uh, the song came to me that the ensemble sings, The Secret Place. You know, let him in your secret place. There's things in here. I don't even like it when he puts his finger on it because he shows me what's there. But he's doing it so he can cut it out because sin is like a cancer. It's a sickness. And he has forgiven us of our sins, but now he wants, to, he wants to clean us. He wants to make us like him. I believe in a practical way. And we can, there's, there's power in Jesus Christ. And that, it's, it's here in his word and this is here. And I, I can't, I'm not going to read all of it. And I, I can't expound on it too well. But one thing that gets me in, in verse 1 of chapter 12, he says, I beseech you. That's like a pleading, isn't it? And I believe there's a beseeching this morning going out, a pleading with us, with all of us here. Because I guarantee you, if you're human this morning and you're breathing, there's something, there's a need in your life and in my life. And that need is met in Jesus Christ. That's the only way. How, how many of us went through a portion of our life trying to fix it some other way? Trying to find some other way, it's just Band-Aids. And they fall off. And the wound is still there. But Jesus Christ, he heals it. He'll take that wound and heal it. And that's the other scripture. But I'm going to read this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Now, you say this morning, I'm not holy and acceptable. When Christ you are, by the blood that he shed on that cross, he makes you holy and acceptable. Offer it to him. You say, well, I don't have anything to give him yourself. Give him, just give it to him. And he'll say, well, well, son or daughter, there's this other area. I want, I want you to give it to me. We, 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 I like Danny. I'm like, no, I don't want to give that to you. I got plans for this thing. And the Lord says, well, I got plans for it. Let me take it. Let me do what I want to. But see, that's perfect. The, and it's, it's it, well, the word says it better than I can say it. Per, holy and acceptable unto God. And he says, which is your reasonable service. He's telling us that's, that's the thing you need to do this morning. It's your reasonable service. I wish I could, what does it say here, 12? Rational service. <laughs> That's the plain thing you need to do this morning. It's offer yourself to Jesus Christ and let him have whatever, let him have it. The other scripture does it better. It says, be not conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I got an email this week, and it was that scripture in another translation, Phillips. And it says that you may prove that the will of God is perfect and acceptable and good. Because his will is good. Yes. And see, we think, well, no, I don't like his will. Because it goes contrary to what your flesh wants to do. But he wants to work in us so that we can prove it. And the world will see. 
look what he's done in that person. That, that person, and he, through our life, I, I don't remember who said it, but through our life, Carl, our life can be a light to someone else out here. They can say, look what that Lord, or look what something's happened to that person. And then they say, well, I want that to happen to me. Well, then you can tell them about Jesus Christ and what he can do. And here's what he can do in Isaiah chapter 61. You go back and get the words of that song, or maybe they can sing that, at, um, you know, sometime. But there's a, it's a, let him in the secret place. There's a place in my heart where even I don't know, there's some things in there I don't want no one to know. But he's handing you the keys with tears of love on his face. He'll make you clean. Let him in the secret place. You want to be clean? Do you got a dirty places in you this morning that bother you, that hold you back from worshiping him? Give it to him. He'll take it. He's the only one that can. That's your only hope this morning is in Jesus Christ. But listen to this, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me. We, we know this is, this is prophetic because it brought forth in, in his son when he came on the earth. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Listen, put, you're, you're these things this morning. Now, you might get offended at that, but I'm going to tell you something. If, just ask the Lord to show you. In the light of who he is and the standard that he is, you are these things this morning. You, you're low. Low as the dirt. I am too. We're brokenhearted. We are captive. We're captive to sin. Tell me that you're not a captive to, some, to sin this morning. That there isn't something in your life that when that's, that flesh wants to go, go this way. I go, okay. <laughs> Lord, help me. I don't, I'm, now, he's, he is helping me. Praise God, but there's still more work to be done. I'm, I'm thankful. All right. To liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. Listen to this. To appoint them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. That's what you have to offer this morning, ashes. But what is he going to give you for the ashes? Beauty. And the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. That's the Lord's plan for you. To have you planted and grow strong in him. Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And there's, here's the final reason, that he might be glorified. Everything the Lord's doing in your life and in my life is to bring him glory. And he's worthy of it. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, it's sort of an unusual service if you think about it. Um, you know, for those that aren't here very often, you know, we're just there's multiple people getting up. And there's, you, you're trying to find a thread. But I believe the Lord is sort of helping us zero in on what he wants to say. I believe Eddie sort of got it started. Um, I've got this, uh, this new iPhone, and um, I'm using about a half a percent of the technology available to me on it, but it's got this little trash can on it at the bottom of an email. And when I press this trash can, this thing sort of magically kind of all flows down and away it goes. No idea where it goes. <laughs> I couldn't find it again if I wanted to. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking about that trash can. Now you think about what happens when we say yes to Jesus. Where's all that stuff go? In the trash can. And it's gone forever. And you know, it's sort of a weird example, but it's true. We, for some reason only known to God, have the opportunity to be cleansed. We don't ask for it. We don't deserve it. But he offers it to us free of charge. Think about that. <laughs> We're born in sin. We are sinners by nature. We can't do anything but sin. Our minds are corrupt. But Jesus Christ offers us salvation and cleansing. And all we have to do is say yes. And then <clears throat> you'll be praising like you've never praised before. You know, let's go to uh, Isaiah 53. You know, I had this other thought too. This is a choice that we make. It's not forced on us. It's a choice 
You know, even when it comes to worship, we can either choose to worship or not choose to worship. You know, it's a choice that we make. It's an act of our will. Well, I believe saying yes to Jesus is also an act of our will. Now, I believe there's divine intervention. There's divine... Um, uh, God divinely works in our heart to bring us to that place, but ultimately we are given a choice. Either we choose to say yes or we choose to say no. It's our choice. No one forces us into this thing. Okay? I remember, for me, I was miserable. Absolutely miserable. Didn't know why. I just was miserable. Absolutely miserable. And so were you. But when I heard... And it took me a while to get, it took a while to get through my thick head, but when I heard and I said yes, I wasn't miserable anymore. I wasn't miserable anymore. You know, I, the fact that Christ came and Christ died, the fact that he sits with his father on the right hand, okay, the fact that we can be made white as snow, that is a fact. Okay, nothing's going to change that. That is a fact. In Isaiah 53, the famous, this is the sort of, um, just a wonderful uh, chapter in Isaiah. You know, he's called the prophet of salvation, but he says this. He says in verse uh, 4, Surely he took up our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. Down in verse 7, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. And all the way down at the very end, and I'll do this quickly, he says, And he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgress transgressors. And there's one, uh, let's, there's one other scripture I want to get to. What is it when um, he talks about peace? Here it is. He was pierced for our transgressions, verse 5. He was crushed for our iniquities. That's what happened. Okay? That's what happened. happened. And the punishment that was on him brought peace to us. So this is the peace that we're talking about. This is the peace that, avail that is available for those that have not said yes to Christ. And then I thought about this um, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Let's go there quickly. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. And the Lord says this through Isaiah. He says, come now and let us reason together. That's the Lord saying, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Let's reason together. And he says this, so your sins are like scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they should be like wool. And then he says this, interestingly, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. There's that choice right there. So what, what's happening here? The Lord is standing before us today. Okay? His spirit is here. He's here. He's standing before us today, and he says, all right, I'm reasoning with you. I'm giving you this opportunity to be made white as snow. I'm giving you this opportunity, maybe if you know me already, I'm giving you this opportunity to be delivered from this thing that has been bothering you for so long, that you've accepted as just part of you. I'm willing, I'm here today to deliver you. And he's saying if you're willing and obedient, if you're willing to make a choice to say yes, I surrender, I surrender me, I surrender everything that's wrong with me, I surrender everything that I think is good about me. Not much. I surrender. I'm willing and obedient. But he says this too. He says, if you resist and rebel, if you say no, you'll be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. There, there are consequences to our decisions. Either we can enter into rest, enter peace, we can be made white as snow, or we can go the other way. It's a choice. No one's going to force me or force you to do this. But he comes and he reasons with us out of love. Out of love. Not because we deserve it. We can't love him because he has to love us first. But out of love, he comes and he reasons with us. Is there something that is tugging at your heart this morning? Is there something that you're thinking about that you need deliverance from? It's available to you and me. All we have to do is say yes. It's no big deal. And, we, and the devil and, and our flesh makes it a huge deal. It makes it a huge deal. It's this huge mountain. Well, he can just cut that thing away, press that trash can, and away it goes. And we enter into life. Now, you enter into life, it's not all happy all the time. Wish it was. We have to make choices every day. 
And this salvation that we're talking about is a continual thing, but there's a beginning time to it. And the Lord is saying, do you want to begin with me right now and walk with me right now and let me help you along the way? That's what he's asking us to do today. If we're willing and obedient, then we'll eat the fruit of the land. We'll be set free, hallelujah, for freedom he has set us free. All of our iniquities were placed on him. All of them. There's nothing that you and I could ever think about or dream about that's evil that he has not taken care of, that was not placed on him at the cross. You're no special case. And I tell you what, sometimes we think we are. We think, well, I've gone too far. I've gone. No, you haven't. That's a lie of the devil. You know, when Peter preached that great sermon in Acts, I was thinking about that this morning. When he preached that great sermon in Acts, the Spirit of the Lord was on him. And, and these guys, they were there, and he preached the Word of God. And they, and they were so pricked in their hearts, they said, well, oh, what are we going to do about this? He reasoned with them, and they said, what will we do? And he just said, repent, believe what I've said, be baptized. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It was no big deal. They just had to make a choice. So the choice is ours. The choice is yours this morning. What is it that we hold on to? It's not doing us any good. Is it making you happy? I'll guarantee it's not. You want true happiness and you want to be able to praise God from your heart, like many of us were doing this morning, say yes to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, as much as we wish it wasn't this way, most of the time we just don't see God coming. And, you know, I doubt anybody came this morning thinking we'll have a service where he offers salvation to somebody. You know, there's so much been said, so much truth been shared, been put out on the table today. And, you know, when that monkey first reached in that gourd, you put your hand in there and you take hold of some worthless trinket that looks so pretty to you. And, you know, there's a period of time where you could straighten those fingers and get that hand out. You leave it in there long enough, those tendons, those nerves, those muscles will atrophy, and you couldn't straighten that hand out if you wanted to. You talk about miry clay, you're in it then. And I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ is so powerful. Nobody has a chance without Jesus. They just don't know they don't have a chance. He is so powerful that he has come among us today. He can shatter that gourd. I'll never forget making that statement to somebody in the old tabernacle building, oh, God, this is so great. It's just too bad that I waited so long and went too far. Well, he shattered that gourd. He can shatter that gourd today. He can open your blind eyes. He can heal wounds that we've been putting Band-Aids on all of our life. He's that powerful. The power that holds us is stronger than we are. We can't break it. But we can choose to let him break it. Choose you this day who you will serve. I guarantee you that trinket will take you to a place where you have a bitter, hard task, Master, that you won't enjoy. You think you will, but you won't. Reach out and say, Lord, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And that thou, that's what's unbelievable is that he would bid you come to me. Oh, God, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Yeah, I don't think a whole lot needs to be said. But you know, there were occasions when Jesus was ministering when it said the power of the Lord was present to heal. I believe the power of the Lord is present here this morning. Yes. And many times it's what Jesus had said. We need to learn to start standing on his promise and on his word and believe that in the face of whatever challenge the devil brings and we are going to see power broken. I, I, I know that God can break power suddenly, but I also know that many times he calls on us to stand in faith and believe his word and be willing to be a daily disciple. And you, you look, you get up in the morning and you say, I'm nowhere, I'm nowhere, I'm nowhere. And then you get down the road, you look back, wow. And you see what the Lord, look what the Lord has done. Then you have something to think about. 
When Dottie comes, you can sing that with her. I'll tell you, I believe God is at work, and I believe he's doing things. Satan is going to do everything he can to dig in his heels. Let's not, let's not fall for his tricks. Let's go by the word of God. Let's simply believe God and not depend on feelings and all the other things and not, not entertain all the negative stuff. Let's be thankful. Let's go by the word. And I'm, we're going to see God continue to work in a deeper way, and he's going to get the glory. Praise God. This has been the Midnight Cry Broadcast. If you would like a DVD or a CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. DVDs are $10 and CDs are $5. And for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your request to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then.